Awesome. Yo, we're live again. All right, let's do this. Let me just Twitterverse this, and we'll get right back into it. Technical difficulties have been conquered. That's how you spell that. Come join me live. All right, guys, we're going to get right back into it here. I guarantee it. Um, I just got to find the link to the video. So I can share it a little bit. Here we go. We're going again, guys. Isn't that just great? Thank you, Quincy. Cool. All right. I'm going to give uh, give it a few minutes just so I can get some people in here. And then I'm going to get right back into coding because um, this has been quite a bit of technical difficulties. We got a mix of hardware. We got some software that needed to, you know, fix some uh, settings and things. But now we're totally rocking it. All right. Uh, with that, I'm going to do a little pop out the chat. And then I'll knock you away. Get rid of you. Cool. Got that there. All right. Well, so hello again to anyone who has joined us again uh, two two hours later but we're rocking and rolling um i'm gonna go for a little bit longer until basically we get through as much as we can um so yeah to get right back into it uh i'm gonna restart the my dev tools here so we got the we got mongodb running which is where all the challenges are stored and then we're gonna go back over to the gulp profile run gulp so we have that thing building and then to give a brief overview of what we're all looking at, I have my VS Code editor, which is running a terminal inside of it, which is really awesome. The code is right here for the ES6 challenges. Then I have the GitHub account, um, my GitHub that I use to track my changes, as well as the um, actual website, you know, the challenges itself, what is being rendered onto screen. Um, before uh, the technical difficulties, we completed the 11th challenge, so we'll actually be able to update that here. Um, actually, no, we won't update because we haven't done a pull request. Basically today, every five that I do, I'm going to do a pull request, and I'll probably just keep a tally on a note card, um, just for simplicity's sake. That way, I can keep track of what we're doing. So we've done number 11, which is the first, and let's move right into the next one. Great. Okay, so use the spread operator to evaluate arrays in place. Introduce the spread operator, which allows us to expand arrays and other expressions in places where multiple parameters or elements are expected. The ES5 code below uses apply to compute the maximum value in array. Returns 89. Math.max.apply null and then the array. We had to use null comma array because math.max array returns not a number. Math.max expects comma separated arguments, not an array. The spread operator makes this syntax much better to read and maintain. Okay. It's unpacked array. In other words, it spreads it out. Yep. All right. Only works in place, like in an argument to a function or in an array literal. The following code does not work. Copy all the contents in array one into another array, array two, using the spread operator. Oh, okay. Two, three, array one. Cool. All right, so first thing that comes to mind for a challenge like this, uh, let's see what the test. We have test that array two is a correct copy of array one, test that array one has changed, and then I guess via part four. Uh, it's going to be an issue though. Because um, we can't test before and after. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yes, thank you, Jesse. Yeah, it's been uh, we got everything working now. We're rocking and rolling. All right. Um, test spread operator was used. So I think I think I'm not gonna do test array one is changed. We're gonna remove that one. I definitely want to test if they're the same, and I want to test the spread operator is used, and I think that's all we're gonna have to do. Um, I don't think that this is. Um, oh. You don't set it equal to each other. I see. Well, then I'll use a set. I'll say that everything in array two is in array one, meaning that it was a copy of it. And then array push. Who? Maybe we'll do, instead I think we'll do is in the test itself, we'll use something like this and we'll push an element to it and then verify afterwards that array two has not changed. Um, so that is, we'll keep this, we'll keep this challenge simple um, because what we're showing here is we're trying to show that we're just spreading an array in place. We're not trying to, you know, show um, every aspect of like ass assignment and whatnot. Um, also, this needs to get updated because there needs to be a space there. Okay. Um, another thing I noticed is that we don't have the break line. So let's grab that real quick. Snag that. Go over here. Ooh. Paste it in. Now we want to, I'm going to want to remove this because I don't think this is important um, for this challenge. Um, and of course, everything that I'm doing here, you know, making these changes and what we'll do is we'll propose these changes to the repository and then when someone comes through and says actually I don't agree with that then we can go back and we can add them in but for um, the purposes of contributing when you're writing code you get to make the decisions and then when you propose and you make a pull request then that's when people can challenge you and say I don't think that's the way to go or you should do it differently cool so back to here so let's write some assert assertions so test that array 2 is a correct copy of array 1. Alright, so we're going to have basic thing and then we're going to have some function there comma the message okay uh, and then we'll just, I can write the message in now array 2 is correct copy of code array 1. Great. Remove that for now and get my comma back over here okay so let's think about how to do this um, let me grab my notebook real quick arrays are a lot of fun arrays you get to do um, some fun things with you get to iterate them you get to loop through them you get to compare them you get to even use sets so I don't know what the best way to do this will be we can probably keep it quite simple so I'll start by making an arrow function um, this way we can contain our code. And then I'll basically, can I do white space? Uh, no, I don't believe I can. Um, so to start off, we're going to say constant array one is going to equal just a very basic array of two elements. And then we want to say that constant array two is going to equal the spread of array one. And now we want to compare the two. So traditionally, when you want to compare two arrays, I would probably write a deep equals method to verify that everything is equivalent. But because this is such a simple example, we can actually get away with doing a return array two zeroth spot is deep equals the zeroth index of array one and array two is equivalent to array one. Great. That should do it for the first one. Now test, um, well, let's do the, let's save this one for the last because we'll talk about that. Now let's test spread operator was used. Okay, so we know how the spread operator should be used. Um, and we're gonna use a code.match when we get to it. Write a message, um, we'll say code spread operator was used. Now let's go over here. We'll add in our 
um, regular expression syntax. And now let's think about the way this should look. So no matter what, because we need array two, they need to be producing array two, then we will probably want to test for this whole line right here with an optional, oh well, first of all, um, use strict. And then we have, I think this is valid. Yes, that is. So we can have optional white space between here and here. But then we necessary white space here, and then also optional white space between here and here. Um, and said, so we don't even want to test this. Let's just test this aspect right here. So let's go ahead and write, um, well, I think I have to escape this. Yep, I have to escape that. And then we're going to have optional white space, the spread operator, array one, and then optional white space, close the brackets, and we're not going to test for a semicolon that's unnecessary. Um, and we're going to say uh, dot 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 spread operator was used to duplicate array one. Make sure we get the close in there. I believe this is going outside, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, let's let's work our way back through this to make sure that everything has worked so far. And then we'll see where we can go. Um, just so I can talk through that. Basically, I just ran node seed before, which reseeds the database. It goes back through all these JSON files and produces all the challenges. And then I just restarted the the, comp, the um, server that is running my instance of this locally. Okay, so I believe all I have to do is write dot 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 array one. Run the tests. Great, they worked. But um, before I move on, I think I want to add one more test here. I want to pr I want to make sure that they aren't just doing this because if they because technically this is a valid way to copy an array but that um if I remember correctly or the way at least this works in Java is if you were to then edit an option an object like a, an entity in array one it'll actually change it in array two as well so we want to test to make sure that what happens in array one doesn't happen to array two so let's assert again or actually, this might not be working because I don't have a comma. There we go, comma. All right, assert, close that off. Let's throw the message in here. Now let's say that, um, we'll say code array two remains, oh, wait. Okay, I just realized um, this first test is doing nothing because it's not I'm just I just wrote code to check the code we need to use code dot match um, otherwise this is pointless um, because this is not like we can't test what they actually input here this isn't getting what they've actually input that's my mistake let me um, let's think about this how can we do this better we could verify Hmm. It's a tricky one. Hmm. Well, technically, we really can't check that then because we're not using a function here. What we could do is we, we could edit the challenge and see where we go from there. So let's say, let's make a function declaration. Let's say, let's function, we're gonna say duplicate, and we're gonna take in an array, and we're going to just return that array. Is that, is that reasonable? Is that a, is that a fair thing to do? And then we would want to say constant array two is going to equal duplicate array. Yep. 
Yeah. So if we were to remove this line. Would this still work? Oh wait, no. Ray one. Yes, it still does. Okay, so let's change the um, let's change the challenge here. Um, into so let's we're going to change the instructions here, and we're also going to change the code. So first of all, we can delete this, or actually let's keep let's grab the change this line. Say change this line, and we're basically going to say. I'm going to want to complete, I'm going to want to copy this, and I want to, uh, I'm going to do all my line by line, uh, well, we'll just, we'll just roll with it, alright, so we can delete this one, it's already there, and then let's snag this line, toss it in here, grab the return, and then grab the squiggly bracket and we're going to need this line here and then that should be golden okay now we should be able to say yeah. wait a second we're gonna test one thing real quick. You guys are learning with me here. I'm not entirely sure everything that we have access to when it comes to um, this testing framework. I believe this will be a valid test. I think this might work, in which case we don't need all of this. But then there is an issue with testing Hmm. Let's uh, we're gonna save this um, over here for just a little bit, and uh, let's just snap it into. Um, can I like text edit? Do I have like a text edit? Here we go. Perfect. Ah, let's have, let's not have that open. That's my bash profile. All right, let's save that in there so we have that just in case. I'll move that away. Um, yes, this video will be available after the live session. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go back to writing the line in that const array2 should just equal the this. And just edit. Um, what do they say? Change this line. And then this method should return true if these things are defined. Okay, let's write a node seed. And we're gonna restart the server. Great, let's do a refresh. And let me just go ahead and basically to remove this, uncomment this, and then if this runs, okay, this passes, this, this passes. Okay, so I was correct. <laughs> um, I, will, I was wrong at first, but now I'm correct. We do have full access to the variable types, the variables um, that are written in the editor. So with that, let's think about how we can check if array two is equal to array one. Um, I think a good way to do that is basically just do um, basically just use a for each loop, and then I believe the for each will pass in the index. And yeah, for there. So let's just go to MDN and get the for each uh, method, so we can make sure we do this correctly. Um, so it seems like we get the callback, gets the current value, the index, and the array. Great. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's go over here. I'm going to say array two dot for each, 
and then we're going to have a callback. And the callback is going to have the current value and the index. And then we're going to, uh, you know what we'll do? We'll use every instead. Because I believe every returns true if it passes for every item. Every, and it's a function. Let's see. So we have the, the current value index as well. Yep, so we're going to use every, guys. Yay for awesome ES6 things. And then we're going to say, we're going to return true if V is equivalent to array 1, the index. If that, if this passes, then we know we have a correct copy. Um, we will return false in here for now. Remains unchained, or when array one is changed. Okay. I'm going to restart. Great. Let's go back over here. We'll refresh. My code should save. Good. And if we run, unlock, and run, there we go. All right, so this one's passing now, which is great. Um, it means that we do have a direct copy of, which is um, really, really good. Uh, so this, if you guys are wondering, this is the code snippet that I'm using. I'll even post, I'll even um, copy it and paste it into the YouTube chat so you guys can use it in your own thing. So that is a shallow, equal um, array equivalency um, checker. What I mean by shallow equal is that it doesn't um, truly check that each item here is equivalent to the other item because technically if you had, um, if you guys are aware of some objects and some um, nested, nested data structures can lead to being buggy when you just use a triple check so while something may actually be the same, it will return false because two objects, even declared exactly the same, are not equal. Um, we can even I can even show this quite quickly in here. I believe if we do this, is this going to be the same? Yeah. So if you notice two objects of the same type, of literally they literally look exactly the same, but because they're not the literal same memory address, they're not equivalent. Um, so this, the method that I posted there will not work. However, if you use the deep equals method where it actually traverses all, all um, keys and parameters of an item, um, then it would be better. So yeah, let's move right on through here. Let's check to make sure that array two remains unchanged. So if we go in here and we say array one dot push and we're gonna add an item like June, then uh, what do we want to do? Actually, now we're going to have to use a function, I believe. So let's pass array one and array two into there. And then we're going to return that array two dot length is less than array one dot length. And before I commit, I just want to make sure that that's how you do length. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, save that. And run node seed. Restart our server. Refresh the page. And unlock our code. Yay! All right, good. That's two down. Let's move right on through into the next one. Cool. All right, what do we got here? Use destructuring assignment to assign variables from objects. We saw earlier. Uh, we earlier saw we we saw earlier <laughs> how spread operators can effectively spread or unpack the contents of the array. We can do something similar with objects as well. 
destructuring assignment is special syntax for neatly assigning values taken directly from an object to variables. Consider the following ES5 code. Voxel x is 3.6, y is 7.4, z is 6.54. Okay, basic ES5. Here is the same assignment statement with ES6, destructuring. Yep. If instead you want to store the values of Noxlax into A, B, you have that freedom as well. Great. Okay. Use destructuring to obtain the length of the string greeting. Okay, first of all, we're missing the proper. Wait a second. Why is the HR below it? It's behind it's a high behind, uh, up here. Uh that's interesting. We go ahead and snag this anyways. We gotta use we have to have that use strict line. Um but I'm still confused as why the use why is the things underneath it. Well, we'll roll with it. Okay, so we want to say use destructuring to obtain the length of the string greeting. Oh, interesting. Um Oh, okay. So let's think about this. If we have a string in Node, um, we're actually solving the challenges too, guys. It's kind of fun. So let's say we have our string, um, you know, uh, we'll just say like ABC. You want to get the length, you just type dot length, right? So if you think about it, this dot length is a property of the object ABC or the string. So what you should be able to do in that instance is go ahead and say const, or we'll just use, um, I'll just use let length equals, or let's just do length, we'll assign it to the word, to the letter L equals A, B, C, D, E, F. L should be six. Perfect. All right. So the, what we're expecting here is um, curly brackets around the word length and it should equal greeting. This is the expected solution. And we want to test that destructuring was used. I also want to make this challenge a little bit more and I want to assign it to len. I want I want the user to assign the length to the word len um, because the word the, the 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 string length is technically a keyword because it's so popular of a parameter for um, arrays as well as strings. So let's go ahead and go into our code. First of all, let's add some white line space in here. Um, great. So I want to say use destructuring to obtain the length of the string reading, comma, and assign that, assign the length to um, code len. Great. This is going to be a fun one. Assert and then length. This is really equals. It just equals 11. Because remember, they got to use the len, otherwise, it won't work. Um, and then message is going to be. Um, code len equals 11 cool um, then we can say assert um, we're gonna want to make sure that the length was assigned to len so we should well we should test that length exists um, so actually we'll start with that assert type of len equals 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 string string <laughs> and then the message is um, code uh, constant we're going to say variable length exists and is a string Uh, that's that 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 okay and if we want to make sure that's how that actually comes out we'll just do yep string 
Now let's assert that our users actually went ahead and used destructuring. So uh, properly destructured, um, or just was going to say destructuring was used. I think that's, I don't think there's a better way to say that. Okay, so let's do code.match, close it off, get our rejects ready. Let's think about how this is going to look. So we definitely we don't need to worry about cons, but we definitely need the squiggly bracket. And then we're going to have the optional white space. We need the strict word length. There's no other way to get it. And then we need the optional white space, the colon, optional white space, the strict word len, optional white space, close the bracket off. And then and we should just test for pretty much that whole line. So then we can do optional white space, equal sign, optional white space, greeting. Because they really shouldn't, um, there really shouldn't be any deviation from this. And we'll skip the semicolon because people don't always put them. Um, so let's go ahead and write that. You guys ready? All right, regular expressions, go. So I believe I'm gonna have to get rid of the squiggly mark and then optional white space, the word length, optional white space, colon, optional white space, word len, optional white space, quickly bracket, optional white space, equal sign, optional white space, the word greeting. All right, great, let's roll it with that. First need here, node seed. Anyone has any any questions? Feel free to reach out in the chat. I'd love to answer them. Change that up. Uh oh, something broke. Ah. Uh. Something failed here. Oh, unsigned token. All right. Where did we go wrong? I see. I see. Okay. No trailing comma. It's JSON for you. Steven, uh, please ask any questions, man. I'd love to. I'd love to help out. Running again. Let's refresh. All right. So code did not save. So let's go ahead and let's type in the potential solution. In the tests. Oh, all right. So, what went wrong here? She doesn't need to be a string. That is completely wrong. I don't know why my brain was thinking that. It needs to be a number. I was thinking length, but like string, I don't know. Let's just roll with that. So that one's good. Um, let's be verbose here and actually check to make sure that edit makes sense. Our code will, luckily, um, this local uses local storage and will store my code. So all I have to do is refresh and run the tests again and we should be set to move on to the next one. And that would bring us up to three. Awesome, refresh, okay, scroll down unlock the code, run the tests, and pew, happy coding. All right, three for three, guys. Let's go to the next one. Use destructuring assignment to assign variables from nested objects. We can similarly destructure nested objects into variables. Consider the following code. A, start. Oh, what, wait, what? 
Um, so we're saying get the variable start, the property start from A, and then from the object, and then, then get X, oh no, sorry, store that as the object. Oh, this is a confusing one. I've actually never used this. Um, yes, I can fill you in what we're doing. So we are contributing to Free Code Camp right now. We are writing um, tests for the ES6 challenges. At the same time, we're doing a little bit of Q&A. We are, um, I'm going through the beta challenges and I am, not only am I reading through the descriptions and trying to test out the challenges just as is, um, and filling out some of the solutions, but I'm also writing the tests, that test to make sure that everyone else's solutions in the future will pass as well. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm explaining a couple ES6 things, and if um, I'm open to questions. And um, soon, once we hit five, five um, challenges, we're two away, I will be doing some GitHub stuff to show you all like what it's like to um, push and pull from the GitHub, the Free Code Camp repository. Great. So the maximum of tomorrow. So this is going to be a complicated one, I think. First of all, we know that we're going to be assigning this to the word forecast. And max of tomorrow is going, to, so we got to start with today. And then we got to say max and assign that to the word max of tomorrow. And that nested block should do it. Um, I don't exactly have a way to test it, but I'm just going to run the test. It's going to pass, but it, we didn't actually write anything. But that just saved my code. So now let's write some tests. Um, we're also missing the use strict line. I don't know if the use strict line needs to exist. I'm going to keep um, copying and pasting it over until, and I think it'll just be a very easy cleanup job if we don't actually need it. Um, because I'd rather put it in there and then remove it later on. Okay. So this one's an easy one. Uh, this align. So we're just going to write assert max of tomorrow equals 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 84.6 and then the message is just going to be simple as this and we'll go ahead and write code here And now talk about, we're going to say nested destructuring was used. So I'm going to test for this line pretty much exactly. There, there really is no other way to do it. Um, and with that, let's do, I'm going to, um, if, in case you guys are wondering, I am writing some stuff down on the notebook just so I can see it. Um, keep in mind, and also shout out to GitHub. I got my little Hubot GitHub notebook. Pretty special. Definitely you guys should get some. Um, Yes, Stephen, these are the challenges that you see when you work through Free Code Camp. Um, we're writing them right now so that when we release the beta, hopefully on Christmas, um, we'll uh, have some fun things for you all to see. All right, let's go through here. We're going to have the squiggly bracket, potential white space, word today, um, optional white space, colon, optional white space, squiggly, optional white space, the word max, Optional white space, colon, optional white space, max of tomorrow. Optional white space, squiggly bracket, optional white space, squiggly, optional white space equals optional white space forecast. Great. This is going to be a nice and long re regular expressions. Let's go ahead and write this. Um, first of all, yeah, well, let's just roll through here. We're going to say assert code.match message. Ah, get 
that in there. Hello, how are you all doing today? I see someone just is here from India. That's pretty awesome. I'm uh, I'm in the U.S. In, um, in I'm in New Jersey at the moment, even though I spend a lot of time in Boston. Let's go. All right, guys, ready for this regular expression? Escape the squiggly. Optional white space. The word today. Optional white space. Colon. Optional white space. The open squiggly bracket. And then optional white space. The word max. Optional white space. Colon. Optional white space. Max of tomorrow. Optional white space. Close the squiggly bracket. Close the next squiggly bracket. But there also needs to be some optional white space in between. More optional white space. The equal sign. More optional white space. The word forecast. Great. Um, is there anything else we want to test? I think that's a solid one. All right, let's let's quickly ch let me just check over the max of tomorrow's equivalent. Good. And then what do we have we have the e the oh, uh, close or sorry open optional today optional colon optional open optional max optional colon optional the word max of tomorrow optional closed, optional, closed, optional, equals, optional, forecast. Will it test for single white space or all white space between levers, what, between letters? Great question. So the reason why I'm using this right here is an optional, it's wildcard, which means it can be zero or many. Um, I can show you that in here. Um, so we're, let's simplify this. Let's just literally do, we're going to say A, um, optional white space B. And we're going to say we have A, and we have a ton of white space that passes. We have AB um, here. And we can do a single space. And all three of these pass. These are all valid for this regular expression. So what we're doing is we're basically saying there can be white space, there can also be no white space, and that's okay. Um, and that's what this is testing for. In fact, the, the forward slash s is white space, and then the wild card means zero or many. We also have a plus sign for one or many, and then I think there's one more. Um, I believe it's zero or none. So there's right. Is that what this is? It's zero and one. So if you have one, if you so for example, this does not pass, but these two do. Um, so those are our three white space tests. Great. All right, that ran. Let's run. Oh, oh, that is. Yeah, let's run node seed. And then let's go here and restart the server. Um, oh, what time is it? It is almost 3 p.m. for me in the afternoon, which would be 1500 if you're on military time, like I usually am. All right, let's refresh this. Saved it. Unlock the code. Run it. Ah, all right, something did not work. Why does it not equal that? Who can tell me? Oh, because I made a mistake in my solution. See that, guys? tomorrow. You'd think that I would catch that, but you get kind of caught up thinking about the code, and which means that I did this incorrect. This needs to be the word tomorrow instead. All right, let's be verbose. Check it, and we'll get on to the next one. Oh, there we go. That work? Oh, no, okay. Broke gulp.
Cool. All right, let's see. Oh, well, I apologize for the dog barking. All right, unlock the code, run it, and we're off to the next one. All right, guys, that is four. Let's do one more, and then we'll do a little, we'll commit some things to Git, and uh, do some fun things. All right, ES6 makes destructuring arrays as easy as destructuring objects. It does. One key difference between the spread operator and array destructuring is that the spread operator unpacks all contents of an array into a comma-separated list. Consequently, you cannot pick or choose which elements you want to assign to variables. Ah. Oh, I know what this is doing. Um, let's do this. The variable, uh, ooh, ah, variable A is assigned to the first value of the array, and B is assigned the second value of the array. We can also access the value at any index in the array with destructuring by using commas to reach a desired index. Use destructuring assignment to swap the values of A and of A and B so that A receives the value stored in B and B receives the value stored in A. I think it wants us to do this. Oh, it looks like this one might already have tests. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Whoa. What is this thing? The array. Alright, guys. Let's see what they have here. Uh, see, they're testing for a word. Um, equals... Why would it be testing for two comma one? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, unless they're using, they're pulling. Let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, so let me, um, I'm not, I guess it, it works. So we're gonna skip this one because if it's running, it works. But I'm not entirely sure. I guess what this is doing, I don't I'm not familiar with regular expressions enough to say, but I guess this is actually grabbing oh, this is your capturing groups. That's what it is. Okay. So guys, um let's learn let's do some let's learn something fun here. So if you notice this here, and you see where it also copied secondly, these are capturing groups. You notice that by the parentheses around the word for, uh, forward slash W that matches any character any any like character a through z uppercase lowercase as well as zero to nine and underscores i believe so that captures the character and then this one this is so this is going to capture it and store it as like capture one and then this second capturing group with the second set of parentheses says S grab the next letter and say store it and capture two then later on in his regular expression his or her regular expression this you escape a, a number and that will refer to a previous capturing group. So this two refers to this capturing group right here, while this one refers to this capturing group right here. Awesome. All right, let's submit and go to the next challenge. So that was technically, that was 11 through 15, I believe. Let's just check. So use, uh, what's, what was the title of the last one? To assign variables from array. Yep, so we just did 11 through 15. So let's take a quick um, break from coding and we're actually gonna push some stuff to Git. Um, first off, let's go ahead and cancel this and turn these off. And then let's think about the right way to do this. I wanna actually get my pull request up as well. Uh, there may be a communication here. All right, I haven't gotten any review yet. Um, so we're so this is a pull request that I have, um, which is currently tracking the feature request, uh, my add ES6 tests. So because at the beginning of this video, back when we were doing when we were working through technical difficulties, I uh, merged. I, I mean, I updated my branch to the uh, master. 
so we're gonna have no we currently have no merge issues with this um, with this PR so we're gonna be safe to push to it um, and with that let's run git status and see what we've changed so notice the only thing that's changed is the JSON file that's a good thing because it's the only thing we've been typing in the whole day and what's awesome about free code camp is that it actually has a npm run commit command and what this will let us do is create our commits um, but something is not working ah get add now run get npm run commit great so we'll go down to the word test and then we're gonna say challenges and then we're going to do a short 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 um, message we're just gonna say um, ES6 chal 11 through 15 it might not be working because of the numbers no issue numbers so it's gonna it doesn't like me putting things so we're gonna say like C11 through C15 will that work there we go um, we don't really need to do any of these awesome Oh, we have an MDM update. I'll go run that real quick while we go check out. Um, oh, well, here, hold on a sec, guys. All right, run that. And now let's check on here. So we'll refresh. And yes, it should, any second now, this should pop up with our commit. Right? Uh, no, we have to get push. Here we go. Push our commit origin feature add ES6 tests. Here we go. Okay. So we have the commit. We've pushed the commit. And now, if you look over here, we'll give it a minute. Ah, boom, right there. It pops up. It's running. CamperBot's running. Travis CI is running to make sure that the build builds successfully. Um, and from here, we would be good to merge. Now, I do have the ability to merge into master. However, I do not enjoy, I, I want. I always want someone to look over my code before I do that. Um, so until then, uh, we're just gonna keep pushing here. And as long as we maintain the, the um, I forget the word, I guess the, the um, correctness of our branch, which is feature IDS6 tests, then we'll be fine. Um, and the way we do that is what I ran through before, where I fetch the upstream master or the upstream staging, reset my branch to that, and then cherry picked my commits. So what I'm gonna have to keep doing is until I get to that point, I'm just gonna have to keep cherry picking these three commits until we're good to go. All right, so we're done with those five. Are there any questions in the chat before I move on to the next five? You guys have an amazing bootstrap walkthrough. Any plans of making SAS or CSS grid material? Well, let's see what we have over here. Responsive web design. Um, we have the basic CSS, visual design, accessibility, web design principles. We have the Flexbox tutorial and applied design. Some front end libraries. We have bootstrap and we also have SAS right here. Um, I believe, yeah, it has even has challenges, Steven. So um, you uh, definitely, it's coming, um, it's in beta. And yeah, cool. Let's also go ahead and update here. We know that we pull a crest finished. So we're gonna go ahead and update our emojis so that if someone else wants to come by and check that you'd be like, oh yeah, look what all the work they've done. Cool. Whew. Halfway there guys, halfway there. Let us get right back into coding. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna take a quick drink of water and make sure this was run. Yeah, we're good here. Um, we'll get everything going again. And quick drink. Always stay hydrated, everybody. It's an important thing to do. Cool. Brain food called gummy bears. All right, and we're 
on to the next one. Destructuring assignment with the rest operator to reassign array elements. Ah, I use this one a lot. Okay. A, B. Destructure the rest of the array. Great. The rest element only works correctly as the last variable in the list. As in, you cannot use the rest operator to catch a subarray that leaves out last element of the original array. Cool. Steven, are you working through the beta or are you working through the main curriculum? So the challenge is we're basically just going to do a slice and we just want to take the first two out. Main curriculum. All right, cool. Yeah, keep keep going through the main curriculum, Stephen, and um, you'll see there's a little bit of SAS in the data visual section, um, but I don't know. It's not going to be, if I remember correctly, it's not going to be as you are familiar with, like with all the testing and stuff. Um, I believe in the new curriculum it actually is tested and all that fun stuff. Um, okay, so how would this look? I think this is as simple as going, we would just destructure, typing backwards here, everybody, do A, B. Cool. That should work. And there doesn't seem to be any tests. So let's go ahead and write some tests. <sighs> All right, so we have to do a deep equals again. Oh, uh, no, our shallow equals. Um, I had the code snippet, so we already know we can do that. So let's snag that again. And we'll just plop that into a text thing just so I have it. Oh, <laughs> look at that. All right. Uh, let's assert. Then put the message in here. We're going to say code array is code now um, oh here's a fun one ready so we'll just do we'll just say array dot every and then we're gonna literally do vi is um, value is equivalent to i plus two so we're doing a little you know little like cheaty thing here we're basically just notice that or actually index would be plus three because like you know you have zero one zero plus three is three one plus three is four so on and so forth um that's a good one that's a that's an easy way to do this uh because we're just using the incrementals and then we can then do a cert a re, uh, source dot every comma i say that the value is equivalent to i plus one instead and say our message is code source code is I'll copy that in in a second and we gotta finish the message block comma great alright let's get rid of these okay so we have two easy asserts to write, so let's start with the first one, and we'll say assert that the code dot matches regular expression. And we're gonna put the message in here, and we're gonna keep working through. 
So destructuring was used. Let's go back and look at our code. So we know our solution basically is going to have some word character. Um, Sammy, I have been coding for about four years now, but I've really only been doing the open source thing um, since like really like heavily like this past September, um, but I've been familiar with the Git um, kind of aspect for about a year. Um, so we're gonna have optional white space, um, word character, optional white, or word character, optional white space, comma, optional white space, Whew. so much fun white space, word character, optional white space, comma, optional white space, destructuring with the word array, because we need it to be named array, optional white space, close bracket. That'll be good enough regular expression, I believe. So we have to do the open, go here, then do the optional word character. It needs to be one, so we'll just do strictly one. Yep, just leave it as is. Optional word character, comma, optional word character, or optional space, word character, optional space comma uh, oh did I miss something comma optional space dot 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 array optional space and close bracket all right and we got one more um, assert at the code dot match so we want to know that slice was not used so a fun one to write is you literally just you look for the word slice but you just know you just um, flip it to make sure that they didn't actually put it in there. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say array dot slice was not used. And I'll probably write this. I'll do array dot because this is literal. Uh, I might have to do this. That's a BAM or something like that. Steven, I'm not sure what you mean by uh, BAM. BAM. Sammy says, planning to study electrical and electronic engineering next year, which programming takes a big chunk out of the course, but sometimes I don't know where to start and feel overwhelmed. Um, Sammy, one thing I can tell you is um, coding is a wild roller coaster, and there's a really awesome community, especially here at Free Code Camp, for you to learn. So if you just start out um, as small as you possibly can and just keep working your way up, um, eventually it'll be you know second nature and um, with electrical and electronic engineering um, what I've been told is that you really your kind of programming will be more lower level um, instead of like you know a lot of the high level object oriented stuff especially not even like web design you won't really see um, unless you would decide to take that of course and um, with lower level with lower level programming it will be more complicated but if you get a good sense of math some discrete structures um, you know learn the basic syntax of JavaScript and Python um, which we will be working heavily on you should be really sh you should be set and just take it slow take your time learning these things it doesn't it's not gonna come overnight um, but it's definitely doable and there's also a lot of fun support so you can always reach out if you need it um, let me write this message and I'll respond. Um, which one was this? Oh yeah, destructuring destructuring was used. All right, I think I got another question here. While I write, I'll do the node seed while I read this. How are you feeling about the Vue.js framework? I just started learning it and need to know. In need to know, do you think if it will get picked up? Because as of now, there isn't much docs about it. So Vue.js is a um incredible framework I do not know it yet I do plan on learning it um, it's a great thing to have in your toolkit 
Um, there is, for what I understand, there is a pretty decent docs and actually has a lot of really cool um, add-ons as well. I believe there's a, something called like Nuxt.js, which is um, a Vue.js like, uh, like almost like a static web loader, I believe. Really good for front-end projects. Um, Vue is a lot smaller than React and I think it's a lot computationally less. It doesn't have the same, um, obviously it's not going to be the same as React. Uh, it's a great thing to have in your tool belt, um, and I wouldn't discount it. I just think that React has a React does have a very large presence in the front end thing, but it, they're not the only one. And definitely learn Vue if you can. Um, what motivated me to get into programming? Started with uh, for me it was just I always thought coding was this really cool thing. You know the you know you always see it on like TV and stuff like hackers and things. Um, and I was like, well, I can't become a hacker, so uh, let me learn how to build websites. So I did. I learned, um, used, I think, Code Academy when it used to be like completely free. Um, and I learned that in high school. And then from there, I just kept working on it and eventually worked my way up until doing um, JavaScript and then getting more complicated from there, earning some, uh, looking into object oriented programming and basically running with it. All right, we got everything to pass except one, guys. Let's figure out what happened. Oh, something did not work. Was that a, is there something wrong with in here? No, all right. Um, why did source not work? Hmm. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm confused, guys. I don't know what's wrong with this line. Let me um, let me run it in Node real quick. Oh, am I missing something? Nope. Oh, well, I'm not even in Node. Oh wait. Interesting. I wonder what's doing this. Why would that run false? Source.every is not a function? Um, Steven says, how long did it take you to learn Node? I'm um, still learning Node, actually. Uh, then a little bit of con contributing. I've gone to two Node conferences, and that has helped a lot. Sort of learning Vue is much smaller and easier to pick up. Angular and React are my goals. Um, Dead Zombie, I'd encourage you to focus on one of them, and then when you are very confident with one of them, then pick up another, and then leave it at that. I think learning all three might be a little overkill, and you'll realize that um, there really isn't a point, um, especially the difference between Angular and React. I would encourage you to go with React. It's much more widely adopted. Um, and a lot more of like some popular open source projects like Free Code Camp. Um, I find it a little bit easier to understand. Um, and like I said, do React then Vue, or the other way around, do Vue then React. That's uh, my personal opinion. But I would refrain from going through all three. It might be a little overkill. Um, all right, guys. Let's see what is happening. Is source being edited? Is that why? Does I don't think that that would affect it, but what is source? Okay, an A, and B, and then array. Guys, I don't understand what's going on. Let's um, go back. We'll run node seed one more time. And we'll say node. Oh, you know what it might be? I think it has to do with the STD out. Let's see. Maybe that's it. It's 
unlock the code, run the console. Ah, it says source is not defined. I don't know why. Can I see what the console says? Source that every is not a function. But array had every is a function. Oh gosh, this is really confusing, guys. I don't know what's wrong. Well then, um, I'll just get rid of this line. I don't know what's up. And it doesn't make sense. I think it might have to do with how we're spitting things out of these tests because obviously it's not just running. So there might have to do with the way like what is being passed through. Um, I'm not exactly sure. All right, we'll get rid of that. And um, the other ones are passing. So we're gonna one more time run node seed. And that is our, <laughs> took us a while, but that was our first challenge um, for this set. Do a little restart. Um, let's keep pushing through. Do a little refresh. I mean, I don't even know why we'd have to test source to begin with. It's not being it's not being written by the user. Great. All right, guys, we're on to the next one. Destructuring assignments to pass an object as a function's parameters. In some cases, you can destructure the object in a function argument itself. Consider that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it does. All right, let's see what this wants us to do. Use function argument destructuring. I think I know exactly what it wants. Basically, just write max min. Um, yeah. Alright, we'll run our test just so we have our code saved. And now let's get to writing them. <sighs> uh oh, something hung up. Ah, that's just gulp. Gulp being gulp. Yeah, Steven is very right. Um, you just, if you just if you know one, it's really easy to learn another. And um, if you know something in coding, like if you learn Python, if, for example, if you learn JavaScript real well, you can take that directly over to Python. And then when you know Python really well, you'll be, and you have that object-oriented mindset, you'll be able to pick up Java or C++ or C Sharp, and you'll be, you'll be perfect. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I do not mind. I am 19 years old. Cool. All right, let's test these things. Assert um, stats as an object. Uh, sure, we can do that. Type of stats equals 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 object. Yeah, go go nineteen. Cool. All right, and on to the next. It's an easy one. Let's do another another easy one here. Assert that the value half is equivalent to twenty eight point zero one five. No, sorry, half. is half 
have I had any coding internships jobs? Um, I do. I have. Um, I started off as a web developer um, in high school, part time, and then from there I did a lot of um, did a little bit of freelance, not a lot, just a little bit of freelance. And then I went to college or university and learned a bunch of new programming stuff, joined some clubs, went to some events like a hackathon. Um, and then from there, I built some of my own stuff and then did some open source. And then uh, recently, I accepted a position uh, as an intern with Microsoft for next summer. So going up. Cool. All right, let's check destructuring was used. We need to test for this line right here. So let's do some write downs. Right, we got parentheses, empty white, optional white, squiggly, optional, the word max, or technically not the word max. We can just do, we'll just do word. That, match, that matches a single character though, right? There we go, cool. And we'll do another one like that with the optional white spaces in between. And another optional white space, close it off, white space, parentheses. And thank you very much, Sammy. I wish you the best of luck with your with your uh, endeavors too. All right, let's keep going through. So open that up or escape it. Optional. That optional. Word more, um, more than one. Optional. Comma. Optional. Word. Optional. Escape it. Optional. Close it. And we'll say destructuring was used. All right, have a good one, man. Thanks for joining us. All right, save that and let's do go over here, run node seed. Node, we will restart. Refresh. Unlock the code, run it. Half is not 28.05. Hmm. Uh, well, maybe that's not the right math. So let's see. 56.78 uh, plus, I think it was like, oh well, I don't even remember. I can't remember it. Ah, all right, let me just go ahead and do it in Node. 56.78 plus negative 0.75 divided by two. Uh -huh -huh. I don't have these. Let's go over here. Okay, that should be that, um, but it's not. So let's find out why. What is half? Let's check our console. Half is 28.015, so I don't know why this is failing. Well, half is a, oh, uh, uh, I see, ready? 
so half itself is a function not just a variable so we actually have to pass it the variable stats and then we have to say half stats is it all right there we go restart the server refresh the page unlock it and run it and we're golden all right we're flying through these on to, on to number 18 a new feature of ES6 is template literals Yay! Gotta love template literals. Use template literal syntax with backticks to display each entry of the results object. Of the result object's failure array, each entry should be wrapped inside a list element with the class attribute text warning. Whoa. What is this asking? <laughs> All right, so we're going to help this challenge out here. It's a little confusing. But we're first of all, I'm going to call this result display array so people get an idea that they're actually dealing with it right here. Each entry of the result object's failure array. Each entry should be wrapped inside a list element with the class attribute text code warning, comma, and listed within the, the what's the variable name? result display array great okay so I'm going to do result dot failure dot map now we're just gonna pass the string into a anonymous arrow function and this is just going wait yeah map map does it right yeah actually we're gonna have some fun here I'm just going to get rid of that, and I'm just going to one-line it. Yay for one-lining. Okay. So to start off, it's going to have a li class equals text warning, and then template literal v, and then close out the li. All right. Run it. Yay, we passed. We didn't do anything, actually. All right, um, it looks like this is a very literal challenge, so it seems like we can kind of be stricter with our tests. <sighs> Result display is a string. No, that's too, I'm not gonna put, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do this way. I like the way that I did it. Making executive decisions. When you're writing the code, you get to make the decisions. And we're going to say that result display array. First of all, type of is, I believe it's array. Oh, it's object. Eh, I don't like that. Well, uh, it's better than it being like a string. So, is a list 
containing code results And we'll do a little fun result failure messages. And we'll say and result display array dot length is three. That's a good enough one. Say our message is here. We'll, we'll just grab this. Okay, get rid of that. And now we have to test for desired output. Ah, okay. Um, there used to be a way to provide a, there, 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 there was, there may probably still is, I just don't know it, so I don't want to deal with it right now, but I know there's a way you can provide a solution that you can test theirs against, um, but I think for the instance of this, I'm just going to do, uh, here, ready? Dot every value. going to equal value needs to equal and then we're just going to use we're going to use the exact same thing uh, but ooh. and then instead of putting v here we're going to do what is it called? Result dot failure. I. Result display array is the desired output Temp te test template strings were used all right how do we do that you ask well simply put we're gonna need right I know we're gonna have to use code dot match and then the message Okay, um, so they need to use template literals along with the blink stuff, um, but I don't want to like limit them. This is a tricky one because there's many ways to do it and some valid ways and I don't want to discourage. Hmm. Can't be too strict, but also can't be too laxed. So what if I can definitely at least test for what if we did like we want to test the code for the back tick, then potentially. Oh man. Excuse me. Hmm. That's the line that we want them to use. Is there any other way to do it? They could concatenate, but that's against the rule. We're against the rules. So I think we should just test for this literally. Coding and caffeine. I could use some caffeine. God, that'd be a great that'd be a great thing to have right about now. Um 
Maybe, maybe if we if we go for maybe when we reach the next five, I'll go make a cup of coffee during a little break. All right, let's copy that and let's just plop it in right here. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is going to be a tricky one because I don't know if I have to escape everything in here. I think I've got to escape those. Let's just run this through real quick over here. Ah, uh, we got to put one here too. it and then we also need to escape the back tick because that's important okay and then if this in this instance we would have then that does not match hold on a second oh it's because it has those in it there we go cool okay so we'll snag you put you in there and we got to just go back through and double tick I have a bunch of these. Those don't need to get double ticked. Or do they? Yeah, big huge cup of coffee. Yep, sounds sounds about right. Um, I mean, I believe every single one. Yeah, you can't do that because that's that's for the text. <sighs> All right, guys. Template strings. Yeah. Where's used? Where is that? Here we go. All right, let's go for it. I haven't tested this one yet. Great work. Let's run the test once just so we make sure it's saved. And now refresh. Unlock the code. Run the test. Pray everything runs. Ah, uh, things broke. Result display array not defined. Ah. Everything broke now. Result display is not defined. What? Oh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. There we go, guys. All right, that's number three. Two more, and I get a cup of coffee. Let's do it. All right. ES6 adds some nice support for easily defining object literals. What are object literals? Hmm? Oh. oh. Oh, oh, I know what this is. Aha. All it's asking us to do is just use this. And whoop. Oh, gotta have commas in. So basically, we're going to test for, I know what I'm going to do. Well, let's see what they say. Test that the output is name, Zodiac, Hasbro, 56 male, test, no, colon is present. Yeah, so we'll test, we'll fill, we also, uh, it's an object, so I technically can't, I shouldn't test for order of things. Cool. Let's do this. So let's first run the test just so our code gets saved. And then we'll go through here and write some tests. All right. Assert that the output of create person. Uh, 
Oh, we need a DB equals. Oh, let's see. How a good learned JS book. Um, I don't. What's books you can read? Um, learn ES6 the hard way. I think that one's free online. Has some good stuff in there. Eloquent JavaScript is also a good one. Um, has some as I don't know how updated it's been. It's been like a few years since they released Eloquent. I'm not sure if it's been fully updated, especially not to ES6. Um, maybe it has. Can't remember. Um, also, yeah, MDN is a really good one. I'm. I mean, I actually have it open right now. It's it's, it's just my it's my go to. I find their documentation very nice. Um, I never read the W3 Schools documentation anymore. It's I strictly go on MDN, even for HTML and CSS. Um, and then Steven asked, how did I learn JavaScript? This has been the biggest roadblock for me. I feel like I learn, relearn, and get nowhere. Ah, this is a great question. Um, first of all, it's like practice makes perfect. Just, um, I started off with Code Academy. I think the amount of JavaScript tutorials I've done probably is like way too many. I think I've done one on the Code Academy. I've done the free Code Camp curriculum. I've done the W3 Schools thing. I think they had a curriculum. I've done Udemy, I've tried like Coursera as well as um, I think even Treehouse for a very brief time. Um, so I've tried a lot of different resources. I find Udemy worked for me. So when you find, first of all, when you find the resource that works for you, keep going back to that resource. Um, uh, Udacity, that's another good one. Uh, I think they're just a little bit more expensive sometimes. And uh, recently Egghead IO, they have a good, they have a good curriculum of stuff. But again, they have a little bit of a price tag. So you figure out your learning resource, you go through the videos, and then then there's an aspect of putting it to use. You really Nothing will really stick if you don't use it. And that said, you don't need to use it all the time, but you need to apply it. So I think the difference of use and apply is um, sometimes people miss. So you need to apply what you learn, and you can do that through many ways. You can start side projects you can update projects you built while learning you can also contribute to open source now i tend to do the f two of them i contribute to open source um, as you can see and i also write my own projects i believe i have i have two actively developed projects active actively developing projects right now um, both in javascript both with, with react and both of them are quite different um, but use a lot of the same features. So I'm doing a lot of th new things for each of them. For example, one of them is gonna have a very awesome authentication API using Auth0, which I've never gotten to play with before. Um, so I'm learning by applying my JavaScript skills to that. And uh, the other one is strictly just a lot of database stuff. So I'm working with a lot of data. Uh, yes, they both are. I think I can actually I believe one of them, if you guys, um, just bear with me a second. I'll get up. I'll show you guys my GitHub, and I'll put the links in the chat so you can see the projects that I'm talking about. One of them is Cookie Jar. It doesn't have any code just yet, um, and the other one is Viking Honors Manager. So here is one of them. I believe it's not on Master yet. I'm still working on an integrate um, on an integrate method or on a, on a branch to integrate a database into it so that one the master branch on that one is outdated but then I also have this new project which I'm doing a lot more planning on um, but has if you look in it there should be some PNGs those have uh, mock-ups for stuff that I plan on adding so yeah those are the two projects that I'm currently working on um, both open source but probably not as uh, nicely open source as some other projects are all right, back to the coding. We were looking at this before. Yes, we got to assert that create person. Well, we should probably just copy this. Oh, what are the objects? The object equality. I think object has like a dot equals method, but I'm not sure. Oh, are they private repos? Oh. Um, let me see. 
Sorry about that. I think, yeah, I'll make, um, I can make cookie jar public. Cookie jar is public, I believe. Yeah, cookie jar is public. Um, but the, but the Viking honors is not, um, so The, uh, what's it called? The, the Viking Honors one is not, and that, I think I need to keep it that way, because it's going to be for, um, a sum, the summer, a summer camp that I work for. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know how to tell if it's fine or not. Uh, nope, it doesn't seem like it's private. Uh, I get a 404 for which one maybe it's maybe it has to do with um, the way uh, YouTube does links but if you guys look me up on um, github I have a ton of repositories and then one rep repo is called Viking honors manager and then another the one is cookie jar so oh that's incorrect let me remove that The other one is called that. So those are the two project names um, on GitHub if you wanted to look them up. Cool. Uh, we were looking for object equals. But it doesn't really do that. It has something else. Yeah, keys. Okay. Right. Yeah, YouTube. I don't think you. I don't think YouTube supports links in um its chat. Or if it does, it's weird about it. Um, let me see real quick. Okay. Cool. Let's keep moving forward. So, we're gonna do some real funky JavaScript. So first we're gonna wrap our result object in object.keys. And we're gonna say dot um, for ooh, this is a hard one. I think I can do const name equals zodiac hasbro constant age equals fifty six and then constant gender equals oh wait this shouldn't be a string gender equals male and then our function well now that it's not a function now it will do return object.keys dot create person Um, name, age, gender. Dot every value. Ah, oh, well, this is now. This is every key. All right. Every key. Um needs to be the value uh wait I think it might be better if I did const result work bear with me guys we're getting there
there might be a better way to do this so if anyone notice if anyone knows make sure to make sure to say so I'll keep tabs on the comment section of this video too after the fact so if you guys are watching this in the future um, definitely give me some input I'd love to hear it and uh, I'll definitely you know everything can get changed so let me know and you can also review it in github let me know if there's things that you want changed all right so that's the result that's what we want and then we're gonna go ahead and copy those three things again place it into here and then we're gonna say the every key and we want the the result to be and sorry guys now we're gonna alright how about this we do constant P person equals And then we need to return object.keys person dot every key. I'm going to say person uh, key is going to be equivalent to result key. Whew. All right, guy, okay. I think that does that. Wow. And what's the, what's the intended message? The output is okay. Okay, great. And now let's do an e now we have to we have to finish up with an easy one no colons exist anywhere in this one um, no were used Whew. all right guys wow that was this was a harder one could also be the e caffeine that I need Bruce Moriarty Bruce Moriarty oh cool the link works your name is also very familiar I believe there's a character in the Sherlock Holmes show I was watching that today and I think he has your name Now, expected expression got keyword const. All right, we need to wrap this in a function. Indeed. Yeah, it does have your surname. I knew it. Don't ruin it for me. I haven't finished watching the episode yet. <laughs> Let's see, that's that, and let's re. Oh, nope, I always break gold. <laughs> Can't just one up it, you gotta retype it every time. All right. Here we go. Fresh, fresh, refresh. <laughs> going try again here we go there we go unlock it run it and it passes Carlos can you use gulp watch yes so um, gulp is watching but even if it was watching the JSON files we're it's um, how do I explain this? We need to rerun Gulp when the database gets updated, not when the JSON file gets updated. So when we, the reason why I'm doing, I, I update the JSON, Gulp probably already refreshes. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not. Um, but what at that point, the database hasn't been changed, so it doesn't matter. 
so when we run node seed it redoes it like re entries things in the database and then you refresh gulp and it requeries things and then it pumps it all back into the page um this is just a development it's a way the development works it's kind of it's not optimal um and hopefully it'll change in the future but that's just how things are going at the moment um give me one hot second also we just finished another challenge so look at look at us nothing can stop us now all right great that is four We're on to the next one. One more, and then I get to get coffee. And then I'll do probably five more and be done for the evening, afternoon. When defining functions within objects in ES5, you have to use a keyword. Function as follows. In ES6, you can remove the function keyword and colon altogether when defining functions in objects. Here's an example of the syntax. We factor the function set gear inside the object bicycle. All right, so I think all we have to do is write set gear. Okay, hold on a second. What does this say? Test the output is sending request to Yanoshi Mimoto. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Is that that's not the Bitcoin guy, is it? Who's the No, that's something with an S, right? Who created created Bitcoin. Yeah, that that's Satoshi Nakamoto. Yanoshi Mimoto. Well, no idea. But let's keep coding. <laughs> I guess um, I guess he was the guy that uh, created this challenge in the first place. All right. Oh God. Whew. Let's do it. All right. Well, it sounds like this guy doesn't actually know what he wants me to test, but we'll do it anyways. Um, basically, we want to verify that set gear still works. So let's do a before and after test. Um, so we're going to say, con or we'll say, actually, we, we don't have to, we, we just do bicycle.gear equals 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 two and and bicycle.setgear three. Uh, Oh, we can do, I'll just do this. Don't get too complicated. We'll just set it equal to like 48. And then we'll say, oh, let's do, we'll use a function. And then we'll say, um, return bicycle.gear equals 48. Yeah, that's good. Message. Um, code set gear is a function and s changes the gear very. Oh, nope. Code gear variable great and we already wrote this one so let's just snag that all right and whoop, whoop, whoop. node seed 
Give it a few seconds, and we're going to restart Gulp. Refresh the page. Uh, you see, the issue is this won't work because gear is using it. So what we're going to do is we're going to check that set gear doesn't have it with it. So traditionally, set gear would have looked like set gear, right? What's the original? Uh, and then it would have to have the function. So we're actually going to test for this little bit right there. Okay, uh, I know, I know what we're doing. Uh, what's this thing called? What, what would we call this? Declarative function was used. And we're going to say code.match. Well, we'll start with the colon, and then we'll have the optional white space, the word function, and then open close with a optional white space in there. We'll make sure that that doesn't exist. Okay. Yes, victory is ours. Another five completed. Let's uh, commit the work. And then I'm going to take a very short break to get some coffee and then get right back to it. So before I leave, let's first shut down Gulp, then shut down Mongo, run get status, add our challenge, npm run commit. We're going to say test challenges ES6 challenges. What did we do? We did 16, C16, probably through C20 at this point. Which one is this? Use class syntax to define a constructor function. Use class syntax. That's 21. So we did C16 through C20. Nothing else necessary. And then git push origin feature add ES6 tests. All right, and that does it for those. Let's go back over here. Give it a minute, it should pop up. And then we'll see what's to do next. No. Is it going to refresh for me? Usually it does it automatically. There we go. Awesome. Go through here. Guys, look at all these. Look how great we're doing. Getting them done. Awesome. All right, and this probably just passed. Oh no, it's running running through there. How many more do we have? We only have seven more. I mean, we probably could finish it. All right, well, I want five minutes and then I will be back to push through these last seven and then that'll be all the tests we're in for the S6 challenges. So, um. Yeah, be back in five. Let me just type that in here. Oh, can I say something? I guess I can't. Oh, here we go. Be back in five minutes.
I got coffee, and now I'm back. It's time to do some awesome coding and finish up these challenges. All right, I think I got a couple questions. Hey, how can I become a contributor like you in Free Code Camp? Yeah, so Quincy sent out a message on Medium. Um, Carlos, definitely right. There's also a contributor channel on Gitter. Um, I don't think I have that on this browser, but there's one on there, so you can totally use that. And I don't think there's really much else to it. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm doing today is what like we need when it comes to contributing. So if you have this kind of JavaScript skill, then like let us know. We'll get you set up, and uh, it's a lot of fun. To, so far today, we've worked through basically 11 through 20. We've done these 10 challenges. We've um, done a little bit of Q&A with them, try to like test out what they're actually asking. And then we made some edits and things and wrote some tests. And soon I'm gonna jump right back into it with the next seven. And then hopefully when we finish these seven, um, I'll be able to merge everything into the actual repo and we can get some people running through them and getting some feedback and I'll be able to make more changes later on. There's also a user in here earlier who was literally named like coffee and caffeine or code and caffeine or something and was like, yeah, could use some of that. But okay, let's get back into it. So we'll move this up here for now. Uh, okay, we'll see what we got. Use class syntax to define a constructor function. Use getters and setters to control access to an object. Understand the differences between import and require. I actually don't know the differences between those two. I'm still confused about it, so that'll be a fun one to learn. Use export to reuse a code block. Cool. Use ampersand or use star to import everything from a file. Use star to import everything from a file. Import a default export. I think I got a duplicate in there, so we'll uh, we'll get through that. But all right, we are back to it to run mongo dd mongo b database and we'll gulp awesome and go back to the bash and now let's get back to coding es6 provides a new syntax to help create objects using the keyword class this is to be noted that the class syntax is just a syntax and not a full-fledged class-based implementation of object-oriented paradigm unlike in languages like java python ruby in es5 we usually define a constructor function and use the new keyword to instantiate an object the class syntax simply replaces the constructor function creation. Yes, it does. Notice that the class keyword declares a new function and a constructor was added, which would be invoked when new is called to create a new object. Use class keyword and write a proper constructor to create the vegetable class. The vegetable lets you create a vegetable object with a property name to be passed to the constructor. Sweet, sounds good to me. All right, class vegetable. And get a little styling going. Constructor, we'll just call it name. This dot name equals name oh can you guys hear the fans yeah they're kicking in aren't they yeah i'm, I'm actually working off a, a macbook uh just, just a standard macbook pro i believe so this thing's doing uh quite a lot um you know coding is live streaming off and coding at the same time i think it's running an instance of a database and a local server for the for the local environment and it's running a browser my webcam microphone yeah we're pushing it to its extreme it's a lot of fun all right let's see constructor name great all right that should work and we're going to run the test of course they passed there's none there but what should we test let's go over here 
Test the vegetable is a class. Uh, okay. I want to see something real quick. I wrote class X. This dot Y equals Z. Yeah, yeah. What is type of X function? But we could do like function dot constructor. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Oops. Type of X dot constructor. There we go. Okay, so in order to test if something is a class, we can do assert that. Uh, vegetable well type of vegetable equals 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 function and type of vegetable dot constructor equals equals function and then you put the message in here And then we say vegetable is a class. Why don't we use Mocha instead of writing them by hand? You, you're asking. The, my favorite question ever because I would absolutely love to be writing mocha or tap tests um, but I just don't think that's how this works for uh, particularly in fact we actually may be using mocha underneath the hood um, but in order for the whole curriculum to be able to just kind of be generated into any database anywhere like through like JSON files and then be version controlled via JSON files um, I guess the developers Quincy and Bouncy, like the guys who um, like really like originally sat down and um, put most of the original work in. I believe the other guy is um, what's his name? Berkeley. Yeah, Berkeley and Quincy. When they like pushed through all this through, they were like, "This is how it's going to be," and um, that's how it is. It could definitely change in the future, but um, this this style is the same. We have it's basically just the word assert, like you're asserting something, and then a true dash false and then a, me a message here we go thank you all right message that's good now we need to assert that the class word was used so essentially well yeah okay I know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do a code dot match guys I'll just do class it's really that easy Test that other objects could be created with the class. Sounds good. Assert. Um, what do I want to do? I'll just do like const a equals new vegetable. Uh, should we do something stupid? Should we like put like apple? Yeah. Well, we'll have some fun with this. So we'll say const a equals new apple, and then we'll say uh, return type of a equals 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 object. It's four equals. It's too many. Yeah, I like that. Um, first of all, I can delete this. That's my bad. And we'll say message. I should have probably kept that. Other objects can be created using 
using other um, instances of vegetable can be instantiated. Right. Let's run node seed. Restart the server. Refresh the page. Unlock the code. Run the test. On to the next one. Let's go. All right, we're on to number 21, 22 now. So what kind of coffee are we drinking? Um, I think this is just some uh, house blend that my uh, family purchases. Just black. I don't take anything in it. What's your What's your kind of coffee? I'm also I'm also a tea guy. I like uh, green teas and. Um, different herbal tea. I'm not a fan of black tea, but it's uh, yeah. Usually, usually you'll find me drinking tea during the day. I don't usually do coffee unless it's the morning. But someone got me thinking about coffee, so I had to go with it. <sighs> All right, getters and setters. Ah, ground at home. Very nice. Yeah, black, black all the way. I had, uh, I used to do ground my own, and I used to have a French press, but um, that's not with me at the moment. So back to just K cups at the mo uh, at right now. Cool. Uh, coding, coding, coding. These are classically called getters and setter methods. Yeah, we're getting some object oriented stuff. My favorite. Setters meant to modify the value of an object private variable based on the value passed in the setter. Which is could involve calculations or even over any previous value completely. Get writer, set writer. See, I've never actually used this before. This is really cool. Um, someone just asked, what do you recommend me to do when I get stuck? Depends. How are you getting stuck? You just don't know how to um, you know, implement an idea or are you unsure about the idea in the first place? Um, I guess a general answer would be MDN. Uh, go to the docs, look up documentation. Um, I don't stock overflow is great. Don't always have to go there immediately. Um, sometimes just figuring out. I've spent I've spent. I mean, it's it's crazy to admit, but I've spent sometimes an hour or more working through one little bug just because it was some. I was I had a misnamed variable and I just kept overlooking it. So, um, you know, I guess another tip is take a break. You know look at it if you can't figure it out do something else or go for a walk do something get a glass of water come back and I guarantee you you'll find it within seconds um, strangely it just works like that uh, so let's look over here so I believe that this under underscore means private um, they don't seem to go into that which don't know why but I guess that's an aspect here um, oh yeah it seems like it Notice the syntax we're using to invoke the getter setter. They are not even functions. We just, oh, oh, okay, so guys, this is cool. It's like properties. Oh, this is actually, this is actually a really fun example. All right. So we're gonna create a class thermostat. How does this do we can use the getter and setter in the method? I don't know. Constructor. We'll just call it temp. Oh, we'll call this Fahrenheit. Let 
the temperature. Hold on a sec. I gotta think through this. Um oh in this alright. So interesting. Um so we're creating the thermos is going to be a new thermostat at 76 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we want to get the temperature is going to equal thermos.temperature, which is going to return, which is going to set the temp variable to 24.4. So we need to have, so, uh, Hold on a sec. I see. Okay, so we'll do a get temperature. And this will return. Oh, we got to do some math. They gave us the formula. Interesting. They gave you the formula to calculate Fahrenheit. Wow, this is this is an incredible uh, challenge. Um, quick, I see a question. Do I invest in Bitcoin? I do not. I do not have a single penny invested in any cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. In, though I am very, um, I, I like to say I'm, I'm pretty well educated in the field and um, have spent a great deal of time reading white papers and reading into it. But um, it's just not not something I feel worth investing at the moment. It also, it shouldn't be treated as an investment. It should be treated as a, a currency. And currently it is not. So I don't, I don't exactly support the use of Bitcoin or at least the investment in this in Bitcoin at the moment. Um, that's a whole other conversation. So let's see here. Uh, our, our API is going to deal in Fahrenheit's so this guy gave the formula for Fahrenheit with Celsius, but we're feeding in Fahrenheit, so we're actually gonna have to reverse this formula. Guys, we gotta do some algebra. This is actually hilarious. I haven't done algebra in way too long. That's what you get for going to college and finishing your math minor way too early. All right, we're gonna start off by subtracting 32 and then multiplying by five, and then dividing by nine. Ah, yeah. All right, so it's gonna be five-ninths times the quantity Fahrenheit minus 32. We're gonna equal Celsius. So we're gonna reverse that over here. So we're gonna say, oh, wait, we're over, we're down here now. We're going to say C equals 5 ninths times quantity F minus 32. Can I code if my math is the worst one possible? Um, you can definitely do web development. Um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, a lot of stuff like that could definitely be done without math. But if you're looking to go into object-oriented programming or data, then you need math. Um, even... Uh, even basic algebra, an al a background in algebra with a back, and then a little bit of discrete mathematics, and you'll be fine for most programming. But if you ever really want to get into like data, um, databases, and like, um, you 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 really want to have a decent understanding of um, so at least some higher other level of math concepts. Otherwise, your uh, programming will be limited. Uh, one aspect to this though is algorithms and data structures. If you don't have um, a pretty good understanding of like pre-calc at least and like calc one maybe then sometimes analyzing algorithms and making things as efficient as possible can be uh, difficult but it's definitely not um, you know impossible it can be done um, but yeah it's usually why they're coupled because they, they go in hand in hand really well together all right Put the Fahrenheit in there now. And now with that formula out of the way, we can say, 
What other free versus resources do you recommend while I'm doing free code camp? Um, I mean, I would recommend free code camp. Um, read Medium, the blogging platform. Find follow blogs, um, including the free code camp one. Uh, YouTube has a couple video guys. I don't watch any of them, but I know they exist. And build side projects. I always recommend having one side project. I have two right now. Um, we talked about that earlier today. But definitely side projects those when you apply what you're learning that is even if you're not planning on launching anything or selling anything even if it's just like something that you use and there you build it and then you you archive it for forever the application of building something with the skills you're learning is instrumental to your future success all right let's do five ninths times uh this dot underscore f Minus 32. And then we're going to set Oh wait, I think I just did this wrong. Ha. Uh this is killing me. Um No, I did this right. But setting it, you're gonna do this dot F. Oh, oh, but you set it. So the AP, this thing, it's API, it stays as Fahrenheit inside it, but when you set it or get it, it's always Celsius, I see. All right, so with that, we're gonna call this C. And now we know, actually, I got to go put that calculation back. S times 9.0 divided by 5 plus 32. I should probably do that too over here. And now All right, that should be a good enough hint. Wow, all right guys. Oh, let's do this. And then we want to try, I'll just do the type of thermostat equals function and and type of thermostat dot constructor equals equals function. I use, this is, if you're interested in where I learned this little trick, this type of and the type of itself. Um, I was actually writing a asynchronous method for a backend library called Fastify, and one of the um, lead maintainers showed me that the best way to check if something is a asynchronous function is that it has a dot a dot a dot then callback or something along those lines, and you can check that just based on the way functions are passed around within an application. Test. I already done the test if class keyword was used, so we're gonna snag that. And test that other objects can be created with this class. All right. I'm gonna quickly copy the message I used here, though. Oh no. Oh wow. Uh. Sorry, hold on. All 
Uh, here we go. How do we want to how do we want to test this? Um, oh, yeah. Silly me. Someone's gonna look at this code in the future and be like, "Apple's not a vegetable." You're gonna be like, "You're right, it's not." Fahrenheit. Oh, let's do 32. See, so ready? We'll know that their thing is working, so we can say return type. Well, let's do T, and we'll verify that T dot temperature equals 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 zero because 32 degrees Fahrenheit is supposed to be zero Celsius. All right. Oh no, it <laughs> didn't save my work. <laughs> uh, okay. Fine. I'll rewrite the entire class for you guys right now. Do I need a um, function declaration here? Yeah, I do. And then this will return. So this needs to return. Yep. for Celsius and then we'll, uh, oh. and we'll be able to say this dot F oh, 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 oh. semicolon in there. Let's let me run the test. Thermostat. Okay, well, let me just in case this breaks again. Let me refresh. Uh, that's not what I wanted. There, thermo. It's supposed to be thermo. And now we run node seed. And RS. Cool. Victory! Yay! Hi, Timo. Yeah, we did, and uh, we've gone through um, twelve ES6 challenges. We're gonna do. Our aim is seventeen, so five more to go. It's been a uh, quite a quite a ride. Oh, this one looks like it has a test, just it's not working. So we'll see. 
Okay, in the past, the function require could be used to import the functions and code in external files and modules. While handy, this presents a problem. Some files and modules are rather large. And you may only need a certain code from external resources. ES6 is a very handy tool known as import. With it, we can choose which parts of a module or file to load into a given file, saving time and memory. Consider the following example. Imagine that math underscore array underscore functions has about 20 functions, but I only need one, count items, in my current file. The old require approach would force me to bring in all 20 functions. With this new import syntax, I can bring in just the desired function, like so, using object destructuring. A description of the above code. Ah, cool. There are a few ways to write an import statement, but the above is a very common use case. The white space surrounding the function inside the curly braces is the best practice. It makes it easier to read the important statement. Great note. The lessons in this section handle non-browser features, import, and the statements we introduce in the rest of these lessons won't work on a browser directly. However, we can use various tools to create code out of this to make it work in browser. Yeah, like Babel. And the appropriate imports add the appropriate import statement that will allow the current file to use the capitalized string function. The file where this function lives is called uh, called string functions in this same directory as the current file. All right. Well, I would write import capitalize string from um, yeah. That's what I thought. String functions. I thought. Whoa. All right. Uh, what is it doing here? Uh, it looks like they just never finished there. Not the declaration. Uh, what should we call this? Uh, valid import statement cool Timo, I love your icon. The monkey is very cute. Require is not defined. Ah, okay. This seems like an issue. Uh, challenge seed. I am a little confused. So it asks us for this. Do I have to use like use strict? Is that? Oh nope. I didn't mean to write that. Use strict. The T in the word the in the note paragraph should be uppercase. Where? Ah, nice catch, Quinn. So it seems like this in particular test wants the require word and it's not running without it. But this is not, I don't, I'm going to flag this one. What number is this? Understand the difference between, two, between import and require. This is 23. Okay, so require. Is not defined. So I don't know why this is doing it. Um, but I have an an idea that it has to do with the fact that we're trying to use like a import statement in browser and it might be something on the back end I don't want to try to delve too much into it let me just make sure 
it wants I why are they putting I in there I'll probably just use G and they're asking for yeah technically yeah sure yeah team you think it's back end Okay, well, we wrote the test case. That's really all we need for that one. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, keep pushing through. Let's see. We only have four more to go. I think this is the one that I create an export fallback with export default. Yeah, I didn't write that one there. I'll go copy that. Yeah, Illuminous, you're right. That's a good point. Second note paragraph also has a typo. Let's see. I can go back to this. We'll keep working through it. That's that. I'd like to uh, take a luminous good, good, good catch, Timo, and I want to take a luminous's um, point into this because that is a very that's that's very true, um, and that this seems to skip right over that. Um, the only thing though is what if we don't what if we're not using a a node a, a um, an npm project and we don't have node modules? Could the would the import still work? I mean. Maybe, uh, we can make we could probably write another note about it um, but let me see so now that I've done that let me write the note paragraph and then we can go from there we can run the test again and see if the the dot forward slash fixes something um, even though I don't think it will because the require still isn't being loaded all right let's write strong note Um, in most cases, oh, hi Siri. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, in most cases, the file path requires a, um, before it. Otherwise, comma um, node will look for a dependent, or will look in the node modules directory before it. Otherwise, node will look in the node modules directory first trying to load it as a dependency. Great. I think that justifies that. Um, once we finish, once I finish writing, pretty much getting the base for all these tests done, um, making this, this kind of part of the curriculum like usable, uh, we're gonna want some QA. So if you guys um, are pointing these things out now, we have 27 tests to go through. Um, could use would love the help so but that's step two let's uh, unlock the code run it yeah all right that's fine this test isn't running because it's having some require issue I'll make note of that let's move on to the next one though use export to reuse a code block Um, let's code for my trials. In order for this to work, 
though, we must utilize one of the statements that goes with import, known as export. When we want, to, when we want some code, a function, or a variable to be usable in another file, we must export it in order to import it into another file. Like import, export is a non-browser feature. The following is what we refer to as a named export. With this, we can import any code we export into another file with the import syntax you learned in the last lesson. Here's an example. Capitalize string, export, how to export functions, how to export variables. Alternatively, if you would like to compact all your export statements into one line, you can take this approach. Either approach is perfectly acceptable. Below are two variables that I want to make available for other, file, other files to use. Utilizing the first way I demonstrated export, export the two variables. Oh, so we could, he just wants the words export written here and here. How are we doing? I'll get rid of the eyes again. Oh. And throw in. This time he has the. At least has. Semicolon on the back, but we need to write in message. Um. Just write code. Foo, oh, food, you guys know what's on my mind, is exported. Great. Same deal, I don't think exports are gonna work. Um, this seems like some sort of challenge issue there uh, it's not something we're gonna try to solve this evening maybe another video or someone else does it <sighs> how much coffee I drink I'm so tired yep exports is not defined I don't know why um, so we're just gonna add so we're gonna add Exports is not defined. Number 24. All right. Whoever wrote these just forgot the right way to write the tests. Suppose you have a file that you wish to import all of its contents into the current file. This can be done with the import star syntax. Here's an example where the contents of a file named math functions are imported into a file in the same directory. Import star as my math module from, yep. And breaking down that code, okay. You may use the, any name following the import as portion of, oh, well, first typo is that I'd like to include, because the as is a very important part of the code. Cool. Easy peasy import star as my string module from Properly uses the code import star as syntax. All right, export in one line should be export 
in or export default export is name and that why export does not make any sense Illuminous, I would encourage you to make a uh, create a new issue and reference these challenges directly because um, you're making some very valid points and uh, I don't want to take full credit for them. Uh, let me, I can point you in the right direction there. I'm going to keep going through what we have, but definitely, definitely for this export stuff, um, it sounds like they could they could use a nice little update. So, um, in case you don't know, just go to free code camp go to issues new issue and just go for it I believe you can also find the beta live here so you could just go to the beta at freecodecamp.org um, map ES6 and then use export to reuse a code block make sure you copy this link and go from there definitely would be a great thing to add to the project. Cool. <laughs> oh, I'm missing something here. There we go. That'll fix that. This test probably won't work, but um, we'll, we're not even going to try. I know they're not. Well, actually, let me get the error. Um, so import star as my string module from. Yeah. Come on. So require not defined is the same error for question number 25. Oh yeah, Timo, I am. Nice catch. <laughs> I'm watching, I'm tracking my uh, battery use and stuff for my laptop to make sure things are going well. And um, VS Code is currently using 162% of my battery, which is why it's been slowly dying while we're sitting here. Um, I believe it's the fact that I literally am running a database inside of my editor along with serving files via a local server. So, yeah. Let's move to the next one. We're almost done. In the export lesson, you learned about the syntax referred to as a named export. Ah, uh, uh, Luminous. See, this file has stuff to do on export default. This allowed you to make multiple functions and variables available for use on other files. Oh, excuse me. There's another export syntax you need to know, known as export default. Usually we'll use a syntax if only one value is being exported from a file. It is also used to create a fallback value for a file or module. Here is a quick example of export default. You cannot use export default with var, let, or const. The following function should be the fallback value for the module. Please add the necessary code to do so. Export default. No, it's not that hard. <laughs> All right, same stuff. This guy's just got that, so we'll just get rid of his eye and then add our message in here. So we'll say properly, uh, proper use of uh, export here. Ready? Export fallback. I want to get the output error um, so I can track that. Uh, 
This has the same exports, not defined error. Okay. Oh my gosh. We're on the last one. Forgot to mark these down. One more. One more. In the last challenge, you learned about export default and its uses. It's important to note that to import a default export, <laughs> to import a default export, you need to use a different import syntax. In the following example, we have a function add that is default default export for the file malfunctions. Here is how to import it. The syntax differs in one key place. The imported value is not surrounded by curly braces. Default export. Okay, cool. So as simple as going import subtract from math functions. Yeah, all right, I'll run these tests because we know they're going to fail. This is a requires one, so we're going to write number 27 here. It's funny, it kind of alternates. Then we'll go down here. Guys, we did it. We're at the bottom of the file. Literally three hours later, well, six, because things didn't work out at first. Um, properly imports export default function method. Here we go. All right. Let's do. Let's make sure everything looks good. We're gonna commit this thing and wrap up. It has been a very, very long live code session. Very thankful for everyone that got to join me today and uh, learn a little bit about what it's like to contribute to um, Free Code Camp. All right. Great, well, uh, missing a little something here. Ah, uh, semicolon. All right, we're not going to re-render for that. That's about that. So let's wrap up uh, one more time. Um, I'll walk through it for the end. Quit everything that you're doing. Quit. Uh, turn off Mongo, turn off Gulp. Run git status. Git status will tell you what has changed. You write git add, and you, just, you can add a file manually by typing the whole path, or you can just do the dot, and it adds everything. And then normally you would write git commit m and then a message, but because Free Code Camp is awesome, we have this terrific npm run commit command, which has an interactive commit thing in the jigger. So we're gonna write test challenges, and we're gonna say es6 shall, and we'll do c. What did we do before? We did now we're doing c17 through c27, right? No, this sorry, this was c21. C27. And we don't need any of the other ones. Runs git push origin feature add ES6 test. So I'm pushing to my branch of Free Code Camp, which is origin. I when I do git, I always make my origin remote my branch and then my and then in my, I use upstream, and upstream refers to the like the master or like the one that like the developer has created. So like for example, free code camp, free code camp forward slash free code camp is my upstream um, repository. So now that I've done that, uh, we can go and check here. We'll see we already have a notification, and that means that this just got updated. And that's all 27 challenges um, tested and run through. We still got a bit of more work to do. Um, this was a lot of fun. I'll end today just by going over here with the emojis. I don't know how many of you guys are left in the chat, but if there is anyone left, I'd love to answer some questions before we uh, head out, before I head out for the evening. Um, we'll say PR challenges. I'm going to say update that comment. And we're going to say found issues with challenges number 23 through number C27. Oh, what? That was not what I wanted to do. There we go. 
Nope. Come on. Work with me here. Uh, require is not defined equals produced for challenges 23, 25, 27. And then we had exports is not defined produced for challenges 24 comma 26. Great. All right, guys, I am exhausted from coding for this long, but I'm very happy I did it. Um, glad having you all here. This has been quite an experience. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions ever about open source, about free code camp, about coding in general. I'd be happy to answer them. I believe my Twitter is in the description, so you can find me on there. You can also reach out to me through the um, the Gitter chat for Free Code Camp. And yeah, with that, I'm going to say thank you very much. This is uh, Ethan Arrowood signing off. Hope to see you guys in the future.